So welcome to another video from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we are finally doing our top 10 war games from 2019. And those are top 10 games that were released in 2019. Yeah. Because we played a bunch that were from 2018 or yeah. earlier. So these are the ones that were released in 2019. And gosh, how many did we play? So I was adding up the list. I Because I, I already wrote my list on the blog. I think we played almost 40. Okay. I, I think you had, you'd played like 36 and then I played like two more solitaire ones than you. So it was like, it, it's almost 40, 35, 36, and that, 37. That's, and that, yeah. And that's different titles, all of which yes. were released twice. So we played a good chunk. There is still a lot that we I, did not play. I had at least 20 on my list that we just yeah. didn't get to. It's just, there's just not enough time. So this is what you get in. Sorry. <laughs> so, so that's the caveat. This is a best of 2019 list based on the games that we that like, we played. Yeah. That, the types of games that we play, and the games that we actually got played. Yes. We just didn't... I felt like we played a ton of games, too. We played a lot of older games. And one thing I will year. say, for me, uh, there are a couple games that we played this year that I think were better than a lot of games on this list, but that were not war games. There was some right. really good historically themed non-war games this like year. Watergate yeah Watergate was very good awesome game uh, up front I'm gonna say Gandhi you know and and I struggled with adding Gandhi to my list I'm gonna say Gandhi because That's I don't want to be ripped apart in the comments I'm English but I, I loved Gandhi I really did I love the coin system yep. I just we didn't play it enough see I we played it that one time but to me it is not a war game no, you, well, that's why I would did not put it on. Can you say that about all coin games? No, because one okay. of them is Vietnam, which is very right. much a war game. I understand. What so you're is saying. liberty or death, right? You just feel the the decolonization was 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 more not, of a social. thing. No one's ever like, oh, the Indian War of Independence. Right. No one's ever right. said that. It's not how it, it was went a down. struggle, but it not nece it wasn't necessarily yeah, a it, war. Half, half the factions struggle. are peaceful. So that to me, not a war game. There were some very, very good games this year that I really liked, which you won't see on this list. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll do a separate one. Maybe and, I'll do that. And I think I put a game on the, on this list that you didn't, even though we loved that game. Yes. But you really didn't feel like it was a war game. Yeah. I think, to me, it's a great game that has warlike elements, so I put it on there. And that's Because that's I really liked it. That's fair. So, without further ado... My number 10 war game of 2019. Number 10. Sorry. We're going to get sued. It's Platoon Commander Deluxe, The Battle of Kursk. This is from Flying Pig Games, a uh, system originally di designed by uh, Mark Walker. This came out really early in 2019 as well. We actually played this. I looked back on January the 13th. Wow, okay. Yeah. So this, one, this one's this one been around for a while, uh, considering some of these are like I played like a week ago. Right, right. <laughs> but... Uh, this one, we were very. I remember it was the very first 2019 game we played, and playing it that early in the year, I felt very happy because there are times where, in 2018, it was like March before we played a 2018. I, I agree. <laughs> we actually got to a couple new games very quickly in the so, year. It, it, it's a platoon level game. Um, it has a lot of things that you might expect from Flying Pig games. The production is very high. Uh, the big level counters. is big counters. Nice uh, map boards. And the system is cool. It's it has a tactical feel to it because it's platoon level, mm -hmm. um, but it's not you know man counters. But there is a significant portion of this, obviously because it's Kursk, is armor combined arms, which Lots is very fun to get into it and get into it quickly as well. Uh, we played with the expansion as well we that did. had all like the heavy tanks, uh, which yeah. was tracks in the mud. I think is what it was called. Right? Yeah, which was just it, you know it's just fun. Um, so it was a very enjoyable game. It has that tactical feel, which I enjoy in a game as well, where it's you know, moving from cover to cover, trying to line up you know, individual shots, things like that. This has all of that in a really, really nice package. Yeah. And the combined arms kind of off the bat. Also, that's a big plus for me as well. Well, and the other really cool thing about this one was the, the, the dice were like a range increment. Yes. So like your green dice, and I'm trying to... Your green dice were your close ones. They had better hits. Yeah. Your red or black dice, they were... So it was. It took a while to get my mind around that, but once we did it and I saw the results, I was like, that was fun. Yeah. Really liked that. Yeah, they always try to do at least one thing a little bit new in their games, yeah. I feel, uh, and this this is no exception to that. So I had a good time with this one. And this was designed by David Van Noose, right? Or Van, sorry. Van Noise, maybe. 
What does it say? David, David Van Hoos. Van Hoos. Yes. So Mark, I think the system is from Mark, yeah. from his earlier games. Yeah, because it was originally Platoon Commander yes. back in the this day. This is Deluxe, and, and David did the design. So, yeah, this one's on my list. Spoiler alert. So, yes. Number 10, The Battle of the Curse, Platoon Commander Deluxe. Had a great time with this. One other comment. I, I loved the tanks. They had some just ridiculous tanks on there, like the mouse that... Yeah, you just never, it never ever it, see it in a game because it never saw an action. Well, but it was so fun to but do like, that. You put it in some oh, of the so hypothetical fun. stuff. Sorry, yeah, just really fun. So this had a good is time. my number ten. I had a good time with this fun game. Crunchy dice rolling armor battles. Just yes. goodness, good game. So now my number ten. Yes, that is how this works. <laughs> so my number ten is a solitaire game from Dan Verson Games. Imagine that Dan Verson Games makes really good solitaire games. So if you know David Thompson, David Thompson is a designer that came on the scene about four or five years ago. His first war game was uh, Pavlov's House, the Battle of Stalingrad. He's also done some more Euro-centric games. His most famous one is War Chest. So this is the second volume in what he calls the Valiant Defense series. Yes. This looks at a very small battle at the very end of World War II where... A real uh, hodgepodge of troops. You had some SS officers. You had some Wehrmacht soldiers, American tankers. I think you had a, an Austrian national and then some French prisoners of war, one which was a tennis player. <laughs> so I always felt like he's lobbing tennis uh, he's, grenades he's got, over yeah, the wall. Hitting, hitting um, grenades with the <laughs> but it, it's a very interesting game, kind of a States of Siege type game where you have a central point of the castle and the other, the, the Germans are attacking you along these tracks. Very interactive, very fun, lots of additional or optional rules that just makes it a very great experience. Plays in about 45 to 60 minutes, uses cards, lots of dice rolling. It's just Really fun. A lot of good choices, I thought. A lot of tense. Uh, oh, am I going to lose this? Oh, I won this. Great. And I, I love it. I love this series. I've not played this one, but I've read enough of the stuff that you've read on the blog, yeah. which was extensive, and, and your review and playthrough as yeah. well. Where I feel like I've played it on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I played Pavlov's House, which is very mm -hmm. enjoyable. And this is... It shares some similarities with that game I, it, at the technical it, yeah. level, I think. Yeah, it, it does share a lot of the same similarities, but there's some new things thrown in. Like that tennis player, they, they're escaping. They're trying to escape so that they can bring some reinforcements and help you out. So there's some new things thrown in there. The tank's really cool. There's a Sherman tank called the Basatin Jenny that's sitting in the gatehouse, and it can shoot, and it has a big, big guns and big machine guns, and a fun game. A very fun interactive solo game. So that's my number 10. Nice. So my number 9 uh, game came out towards the end of 2019. And it is also a solitaire mm -hmm. game. And it is Space Infantry Resurgence. You had me at space. Oh. <laughs> so yes, this is a solo game. And this is um, a reworking of, of, of a game that's like 10 years old, 11 years old, called Space Infantry. Um, and they basically retooled the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, this has, you have, you have squad building, you put together your team. It's obviously sci-fi. <laughs> but you put together your team based on the mission and the objectives that you're facing. And it's going through trying to rush in, kill everyone, do your objective, whatever it might be. And, and it's usually against the clock. You have it's a time yeah. limit. You're an elite unit trying to get in, get it done. Um, what's nice about this is that there's so much of it. This is a very big box and it is chock full. And there's another one up there. Yeah, and I got an expansion. An expansion box which has you know twice as much stuff in it. And you know the it comes with a trillion missions, all of which have kind of a fixed board. But on the board you lay out all the different mission objectives and nodes mm -hmm. and things like that. And they're random. Um, they're random within subsets. Right. So that's it's what I meant. Very very cool. But then there's also like um, Starship Troopers style dungeon crawl almost, mm -hmm. where there's a set of dungeon tiles. Oh, there's a missions that you can do where you're you're going through these dungeon tiles, killing all the alien bugs. Like there's so much variation in this as right. well. And, and there's some co-op modes, I think, too, right? Uh, I think there is as well. Yeah. Yes. So we're we're gonna need to play this one together sometime. Yes. I have not played it yet. But yeah, it's so. very fun. It's 
very difficult, uh, which, you know, a good solo game has got to be challenging. Uh, this is very much that. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to do well at this. And like a lot of squad builder style games, your planning is key. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like that. There is almost a game before you start playing of like, i got to make sure I get a good squad together with not only a good variety, but I need to be really specialized at the same time yeah. so that when I do come across, you know, oh, I, I've got to hack this computer. Having a guy with a computer one value, not going to help you that yeah. much. But, you know, can you afford to sacrifice firepower for a guy that's got, like, three computer values? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what's neat about this. So some good choices this in building your squad. Really good planning without being overwhelming. Yeah. That's that's what I enjoyed about this one. So Space Infantry Resurgence is my number nine. So this one is designed by Gatardo Zancani, yes, who also did Rifles in the Ardennes, Rifles in the Pacific, yes, and the most recently released Rifles in the Peninsula. Peninsula. Yes, I know that we've played those. We yep. felt we, that's a really cool system. Not this system. Totally different. Right? Could not be more different. Right. The only things that are similar are their solo games. And you right. put together a squad before you embark on a mission. Yeah. That's really as far as it goes. But he's obviously got a knack for designing solo games. Mm -hmm. And this one's... Uh, it's a huge box, bumper product, but there's a lot in it. You get your money's worth, for yeah. sure. So I, I really enjoyed this one, Space Infantry Research. It's from Lock and Low Publishing. I, I remember when this one was announced, like a year ago, I, I was pretty excited. And I know we got it, and then the quarantine kind of came about, and... I just haven't had a chance to look at it, but it is it is one that I'm very interested in. Yes. Very interested so, in. Great, great game. Had a good time with this one. So you're number nine. That's my number nine. All right. My number nine is a small game from really becoming one of my favorite publishers, Hollenspiel. So this game is Brave Little Belgium by um, Ryan Heilman and Dave Shaw. If you've followed our YouTube channel, we've had a couple of interviews with them over the past couple of years. We met them at WBC. I think in 2017, 2018, yeah. 2017, 2017 our first, the first year. Time, yeah. But they designed this game together. It is a World War I game, and it's it's literally right at the beginning of World War I. Yes. So the Germans are blitzing through, attempting to blitz through Belgium to get to France and you know kick off the Great War, right? So this game sees the Belgian defenders, along with the BEF. And um, there's some French as well. I and there's some French as well defending against the vastly superior German forces. And they just, they really have to put up speed bumps, block uh, the advance of the Germans, use their forts uh, with, with good, good tactical decisions in mind, and, and really just slow that advance. If they can stop them from getting, getting across a very specific hex, they win. And it's very hard. We've played this a couple of times. It's very hard for the Germans to meet their goal, I feel like. Um, yes. But if they get some good rolls and some good luck and make some good decisions, they can do it. It is doable. I remember one of our games, I, I think I almost got there and lost at the very last yeah, minute. And it's, but in order to be able to do that, you have to be a canny allied player. Yes. Because if you, if you do make some bad tactical choices or... You know, you, you leave a fort not well enough defended. Yeah. Like, they will steamroll you, and it will happen. Yeah. You, you have to force the advance to be slow so you can mess up the yeah. Schlieffen plan and yep. eventually win the World War. And, and one of the ways they do that, there's two ways, actually. The forts, if, if, if you attack a fort and do a siege, there's only one attack per round. So if you don't get the job done and, and kill the defenders inside, you're going to have to spend another turn, heaven forbid, a third turn, yeah, and that's you, really going to put you behind the timeline. The other things that the, Belgi that the Belgians have are uh, what I call speed bumps. They are their kind of militia. I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head now that I'm thinking of that, but they're randomly placed around the board and they can be a unit or they can't. Sometimes they're not a unit. Yeah, they might be blank. So it's kind of a cool little, I just think this is a very cool introductory level, fast playing war game. I think it plays in about 45 minutes. And it's just a good time. I enjoyed this greatly. I like Hollenspiel games because they just they pick these really cool battles and eclectic uh, history and, and then make great playable games. Yes. So great job, Ryan and Dave. They have a new one coming out, uh, White Eagle Defiant, yes. which deals with the Polish defense in World War II at the outset. 
So, interesting game, Brave Little Belgium. I really enjoyed this. That was my number nine. So, my number eight game is a magazine game, and it is from Strategy and Tactics. Is it 316? 316? Yes, issue 316. Always, yeah, 316, yeah. and it is Campaigns of 1777. Uh, this is designed. Great game. Yeah, designed by um, Harold Buchanan. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and I was thinking of Terry Leeds, who did the map. We did the map, yeah. And the map's one of the best parts about this game. Yeah, it is gorgeous uh, for a magazine game. It is a really, really nice product. Yeah. Um, but more than it being really nice, the gameplay is very cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a, it's got. <clears throat> some crunch to it in, in some of the ways that some of the small bits and pieces work with all the different naval moves and things you know you can get bogged down in that but boy it, it, this it's such a small map mm -hmm. in the sense of how many spaces there well, it's, are it's a point to point movement map yeah. so there's only like two routes for you to as the British to really get where you need to go but there's just <clears throat> enough room for you to kind of do a move and a feint and yep. do counter blows and things like that it's a very, very tight game, mm -hmm. and that's what I like about it. This, It's got a lot of tension to it, and it will punish you for not doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, there's the English, you have to get out and start attacking. You can't just mm -hmm. sit there and rally forces. You just run out of time, frankly. Yeah. It's a very, very neat game, and it's gorgeous to look at as well. Yeah. And that it comes in a magazine... Is great. Yeah. I, I think that was the thing that struck me. I remember when we got it, I was excited about it because it's Harold Buchanan. It's also American Revolutionary War. 1777 was that really big year for the for the Patriots. You know, they beat Burgoyne at Saratoga and, and the French joined, uh, you know, the war and, and really made it possible for us to continue on and to win. But when I got it, I thought, oh, it's a magazine game. It's not going to be great. Now, I knew the map was cool because I had seen a yes. picture or we had actually seen a map at Origins yep. in 2017, I think. Maybe 2018. I don't remember. Years run together anymore. But, yes. but man, when we got it to the table, I remember thinking, this is a very cool game. I loved how they, the, the Patriots recruit forces from the different little towns. And then I loved the game that the Patriots also were playing of attack and fall back and try to move into different areas to slow you down. One of the few games that I felt like, you know what, even though I was getting my butt kicked as the Patriots, I was okay with that because I felt like I was making good decisions along the way. Yes. So a great game, great looking and fun to play. Really. And, and, and and it's a beautiful game. It's it is. These, these yeah. kind of games that are set in a standard in war gaming that like, yeah. you know what, it's, you gotta, you got to up your game, I think. Great Great content that comes in a magazine, which also has the great stuff. In yeah, it as well. there were other great articles. This is one I'd love to see them release in some kind of a boxed edition. Yes, because I think I think people would really dig it. I think they'd get into it. Great so, game. Yes. Yeah, great game. Campaigns of 1777 from Harold Buchanan. You can get it in issue 316 of Strategy and Tactics magazine. Yep. That was my number eight game of the number year. Number eight. All right, my number eight of the year is from Worthington Publishing. We admittedly have not played a ton of American Civil War games. Yes. I've played U.S. Civil War by GMT. I'm trying to think what else we've played. We've played Battle Hymn from Compass. A couple of other smaller games, I think, from Tiny Battle Publishing. Yeah, and we but played... really not a lot. What was that one from Mayfair? The, the one that was oh, just a die smasher. It was fun, though. But it, yeah, yeah, not really... I don't know that I would count that one. Not a I can't remember the name game. of it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um... So not a lot of ACW Wargame experience, but I'm going to tell you this Antietam system, and this is called their Civil War Brigade Battle Series. This is game number one, and I know game number two, didn't we just get that It's one? Shiloh, yep, I got it Shiloh, upstairs. got it a, like a month ago, haven't played it yet. I, the system is, it's, it's interesting, there's a lot of required command and control decisions about where you put your leaders, how many units they can activate... I loved the defensive fire before offensive fire, and that's not uncommon for American Civil War, but this one felt really, really good because it made a lot of decisions very, very difficult. You know, there were times as a union I had to move in there and be like, I got to take my losses because I got to get that sunken road or I got to get that hill. And, and I just really loved that. And the, the cannon are just devastating. Um, 
but it's a lot about maneuvering. I, I felt like the, the biggest part of that initial part of our game was just maneuvering the right stacks into the right areas to maximize, you know, what we what we could attack. I remember one thing you kept saying was, I want to attack this stack, but guess what? That stack's my stack. It was your stack because you had kind of improperly maneuvered that guy. And it, I don't know, just so interesting. And I love, you know, the Battle of Antietam was the bloodiest battle for the uh, of the Civil War. Yes. The Sunken Road, there, I mean, dead laid everywhere. It was filled with blood. I mean, just an unreal battle. And to see that played out on, on this board, that with the board's fantastic. The counters are beautiful. I really had a good time with this one. Yes. So... Spoiler alert, this is my number seven. Yeah. So, my number seven game is also Antietam from Worthington Games. It is a really, really good game. So, apparently, this system has been around before this game. I'm sure. I think they, they've, it was a system from my back is what I read. Okay. Um, and they've, they've uh, kind of redone it and made, brought it up to date. The, and what you've talked about so far, I agree with what's so, what comes out so strongly in this game is the attrition. Yeah. Um, each of your counters, you have, you have a bunch of counters out, but then each of them has strength point counters underneath them. I mean, they go in up... Big, in big numbers, like, like 20, 22. Yeah. And, and it's... You're trying to reduce those enough mm -hmm. that once you hit a threshold, then they're going to flip over to their reduced side. Yeah. And it just... it, it you'll, do it, you'll do so much attrition, and you're like, gosh. It really brings to life, like, the sacrifices that were made... Yeah. And how many people, just how many people were killed is, it's very stark almost. Mm -hmm. But uh, from a game standpoint, you know, it's it it's, makes your choices very, very difficult at times. Yeah. And, and because of the volume of men in a counter, you block your own line of sight with mm -hmm. guys and you can't shoot through your own That's why I mean like that, man that maneuvering yeah. is so important. And it's... In, you're like, okay, I'm like in this good defensive line, but like I've got these other guys behind it that are really entirely attack. useless. Yeah. So you, you're then flipping guys in and out of reserve mm -hmm. positions and mm -hmm. things like that when they get weakened. And that kind of stuff, where you get into it, it's it's almost this kind of like, it's not operational, but that stuff where it's you get the, the auxiliary stuff behind the actual mm -hmm. combat of shooting is really neat as well. Uh, where you're really thinking about how can I how can I keep my fire up yeah. as I'm taking wounds and wounds and wounds? Well, and, and and along that same line, it was very interesting. There were times where I kept saying to myself, "Oh, please break," you know, because when you when you took a certain amount of losses, you know, you had to do a morale check, and then you could run. And there were times I'm like, "Please break and move <laughs> to the back so I can move some of my better units up." I, I know that sounds sadistic and kind of twisted, but it was. It, once again, it, it gave me that feel of an operational game where I'm trying to put my assets where they need to be. Yeah. Um, th the other thing about that CRT was so cool. A CRT might, one of the bands might be like 9 to 12 strength points. So you're not going to go down on the CRT until you lose 3 or 4, three or points, four yeah. units. But I found myself looking at your stacks and even looking at my stacks, trying to understand, okay, if I could get him just one hit there... When he attacks me back, it's not going to be a very good attack because it's all of a sudden going to drop. Yeah. So I found that CRT construction to be very interesting. Don't have a lot of CRT experience in Civil War gaming, but it was quite a bit different than some of our World War II, World War I games. Yeah. So I really liked how that all worked together. Plus, the series rules included so many other cool things like building fortifications. Yeah. A sabotaging rail that weren't used in this, but you know what? They're going to be used at Shiloh yeah, in so, the next volume. So in Shiloh, all the Union troops are asleep in tents. Ah, there so, you go. So the CSA rolls. I think that's that. It's that way around because uh, I think the CSA like rolls up. Okay, and it's the Union's got to wake everyone up, get in, and get, like and then form a, like oh, a, wow. a, a rudimentary battle. So th there's a lot more to come from this as well. So I enjoyed this system. game a lot. It's a very clear map as well i like yeah. i like the style of it yeah uh, just there's no confusion in what hex is what as well i'm really glad they're doing kind of a series of these because i'll play every single one of those yeah yeah it's and it's and it's a learning opportunity yeah. i know very little about yeah the, the I, acw frankly i wanted to put this one higher on my list but i think we had there were just other games that i felt were better at what they do 
I think if I played this two or three more times, it might move up quite a bit because it was that good. And it's a long one. That's the other thing yeah. I'll say about it. It's, I think it took us about five hours just to do that one scenario. Yeah, and the, and that was learning. But yeah, yeah. This, this one's a bit on the longer side if you're playing a full campaign game. Like, well, just the big full game. Yeah. Uh, so just bear that in mind. So this is Antietam, September 17th, 1862 from Worthington. That was my number seven. Number seven. All right, so now we're on to my number seven, and this is the one that I was referencing that isn't necessarily yes. a traditional war game. There are no hexes, there are no counters. It's very Euro-like. But I'm going to tell you, the history of this and the way that the cards are used to tell that history made this such a fantastic game, in my opinion. Um, Bleeding Kansas from Decision Games, uh, designed by one of our friends, John Paniski. We've played four or five of his games and have enjoyed every single one of them. But Bleeding Kansas tells the story of pre-statehood Kansas leading up to the Civil War and the struggle there between migrants coming in and then being pulled into one of the two camps, anti-slavery or pro-slavery. And I know this is something we had a big conversation about when we played the game. You know, it's, it's pretty hard to play a side that you just, you don't agree with at all 100%. And yeah. it's, it's a little bit, you know, sickening, but I think it's well done enough that it didn't, it felt more like a strategic exercise of how to take over and, and control the board is what it led yeah. to. Yeah, so it, with this game, thematically speaking, because this is a dudes on a map area control yes. game, and you're, you're, you can fight to, to gain control of areas, that's yeah. where it might be considered a war game, but... You're trying to control areas or counties mm -hmm. so that when elections get triggered, your side can yeah. win the political battle. Yeah. That's really Which what Which leads is. to victory points. Yeah, it's a dudes on a map election game, really. Yeah. Um, so, f playing, because I think I played as the... You played as the pro-slavery. Yeah. I don't, is that what you call them? Is that what they call them? Yeah. They... You would be the abolitionists and I would be yep. the non-abolitionists. Yep. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. Because it's not such a strong theme in this, you can just kind of I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's brown against blue, and it's 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 an election game. So I did. There are other games where I feel less comfortable. I didn't yeah. have that much of an issue with it in this one anyway. Right. But it's you know it's that's it's a story of trying to get guys out, and then really when you boil down to it, it's Americans fighting Americans, which is always yeah. Sad. I mean. It's, any country that's fighting themselves is everyone's a loser in there, frankly. Yeah. Yep. But mechanically speaking, from a game standpoint, it is so good. Yeah. This is one of the best games of the year, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, I and partly I didn't. I wasn't really expecting anything from it. Well, and I think neither really was I going into yeah. it. I just didn't know. And we played it, and my goodness. Yeah. Now. Admittedly, this style of game was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. We've played a few games like this. Area control, yeah. fighting back and forth for But control. then that leading to something. So we yeah. Five Points Gangs of New York is very Fantastic much along this game, line. Yep. Unbelievably good. Um, Fort Sumter, in a way, yep. is like that too. Yep. But the, the, these games, gosh, are, 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 they're so simple, mechanically yeah. speaking. Yep. But there's so much decision room and choice. Yep. And, and there's actually a lot of strategy to this. A lot. Understanding where migrants are going to come onto the board, where they're going to move, and how you can manipulate them to move in your favor. Yeah. Those, to me, were the were the elements that reminded me of many many things we play in war games. Once again, maneuvering, getting your people in, in places, and then trying to understand how to eliminate your opponent, either through beating them just in raw numbers or skirmishing with them. Um, th the other thing that I found really fascinating about this design was the card play. Yeah. So the cards, you each have your, your faction-specific cards that have symbols on them. Those symbols relate to actions that can be taken. Burn, skirmish, move migrants, move forces, things like that. The election power. Re election, stuff. Rebuild things, force elections. Um but the very cool thing was some of the cards had stars on them. And when I had to play that star card, because I had no other really good options in my hand, that star coincided to your side and you got kind of a free... A free action. So it's like that concept that I really love with CDGs, that I'm trying to minimize the damage from my own cards 
because you're going to get a benefit from them. I found a lot of that element in here that I liked, that struggle back and forth. I, I just thought this was a very well, well done, done game. Yep. The components are very basic. The map's very basic. It's cubes, right? The cards... But I don't, nothing, I don't hate it, yeah. Right, but it it's just such a fun, very interesting game. This is one of Decision Games' best rule books. It was very clear. Start to finish. Yep. And whilst you kind of have a lot of stuff to do, yeah. you have two cards in your hand. Yep. And there's two icons on each one, so you've got a choice of four things. You I think there do. were three cards, weren't there? I thought there were is three you cards, you one. play one and you draw one. Something like that. Yeah. But it's, you have a very small yeah. hand... But it's got a lot of things you can do, but you can only do one of them. Yeah. So you, there's not as much analysis paralysis as there is in other CDGs where you're like, oh, seven cards, I can it's do a trillion quick. things. Like, you got two choices. It goes through quickly. It yeah. plays at a great pace. Vying for control, dudes on a map. Yeah. Get, going through these elections, trying to get points. I mean, it's it's Very such a great game. So I don't consider it a war game. I understand. This is one of the best games and, of 2019. And I think the only, time, only reason I put it on my war game list is because of the skirmishing and the area control, because to me, it's you're still fighting. I, I understand what you're saying. You're fighting yeah. for power. There's, there's so, open fighting and burning yeah. each other's towns down and stuff. But, but. A, a great game. I wrote a bunch of articles on our blog about this one. If you're interested in checking those out, give them a look. But that was my number seven. Seven. So my number six game uh, is an introductory war game. It is this one right here. Undaunted Normandy. Uh, this is an excellent game. So good. Two-player game. And it is uh, really starting to get into this kind of um, combination of kind of Euro board games and war games mm -hmm. in this one. Uh, because it's a... A waro, I think <laughs> is what they call them. <laughs> but it's a, it's a, it's a deck-building game. Mm -hmm. but and you, I know that sounds ridiculous know, in a war game setting. But it works, it, and it works it really works. very, very well. And yeah. you, you know, you, it's deck building, and you're playing your cards out to move um, units on, on a, a map, on a on tactical a map. map. Yep. And it's tile based, Tiles, yeah. and it's so there's a lot of different setups and things, a lot of missions in this. But it plays very quickly. It's very tight. The rules are very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, very clear. And and it's and they're simple, right? Mm -hmm. You just. This is a game that you just you open it up and you play it. Yeah. And you can play it with almost anyone. There's very few people you could not not play this with. Yeah. Uh, this goes into the almost like the Memoir 44 kind of category where like right. I could play that with anyone. Mm -hmm. This one I could play this with anyone. Although I do believe there's a lot of strategy to this game. Yes. That is hidden, and if you don't understand it, you're not going to be able to use it. So yeah. a, a player who has played this eight or ten times is going to destroy somebody, I think, because they'll understand what cards to put in the deck, how to get the bad cards out, how to put bad cards in your in your opponent's deck. Those are all those little elements yes. that if you don't understand them, it's it's more than just moving guys around. But rules-wise, it's not complicated. No. Anyone can learn yeah. it. Yeah. And and that's but that like you said, it's really nice in that sense. Sure. Like it's on the surface, it's very simple, yeah, right. But tactically speaking, both on the board and in your hand of cards and deck of cards, there mm -hmm. are some really important decisions to be made, yeah. and how you make those decisions and when uh, can be very, very key to your success in this. Yeah, it's just a, it's a very, very good game. It has some nice innovation in how it combines yeah. certain mechanics, and I can't wait to play more of this because there's more on the way. Yep. Und Undaunted North Africa is hitting the streets uh, very, very soon. Yes. So the other thing about this game is the art is fantastic. Yes. Roland McDonald did the art. And I'm going to tell you, I made this comment to David a couple of weeks ago when we talked to him on an interview, but I would have never known, but I wouldn't have enjoyed the game as much had Roland McDonald not, not done the art. Had someone else done the art, it would have been great. But man, his art was so thematic, got you into it, and you just felt like, you're part of that squad. Yeah. So, really liked it. It's very cool. So, this is designed by David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. Yep. It's put out by Osprey Games. They're, it's still, I mean, they're putting out another print run. They've yep. had a few now. Uh, but it's a very, I think, very I think he good said it's been reprinted twice now? Uh, like, see, it's I, on his third or fourth reprint? I think it's more than that. Wow. But they've, they've you know... They've, so, you can see it's a good game. It's come from the printers, of, like, a number of times since yeah. it came out. Uh, yeah. It's just a great game. I've seen a lot of people playing it at conventions we were at last yep. year. And I think this one's going to be around for a while. And, and this is one of those games that will draw other people into the war game yes. genre. 
And that's the way I look at it, and I feel like these games are great. Now, some people, I know some of you out there are screaming at us right now, but these kind of games are valuable. They really are, uh, because they create new... Frankly. Yeah, they create new gamers. And, and in 25 years... People are going to be in wargaming because of games like this, yes. and and we're gonna we're gonna look back and say thank you, David, for doing this game. Yes, excellent game. This is my number six, Undaunted Normandy from Osprey Games, and it's on my list too. Coming up, so I'll put it I'll put it back here. Uh, number six, my number six is Kursk. Good game. Good so game. I, I don't know that we need to say anything else about it. I, I just really enjoyed this game. Frankly, every flying pig game game that we get pig games game that we get we have a good time with ost we've now we just received volume three it's in the pacific we love our pacific yeah. war gaming but tactical uh feels tactical but it's platoon level lots of armor i love it i just really like this game yeah i wanted to put it higher on my list but you know when i create this list i, I ask myself would i rather play this game or the game next to it, and that's how I make my list. There's yes. no, there's no matrix. There's no point system. It's it's based on my feel. Love this game, and that's why it's number six because there were five other games that I, I enjoyed more, but I really liked this game. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, PCD Kursk, basically, great game. So uh, to my number five, it is this one. This is from GMT Games, and it is Stalingrad 42. Uh, East Front Games are a, a very interesting beast, as far as I'm concerned. We, we have our we, talks yeah. about them. We have a lot of talks it's when we play these games. It's a interesting topic of conversation, because mm -hmm. it's like, it's either super duper scripted in how it goes, or if it goes any other way, it's usually super duper boring for one of the sides, right. because one, someone else wins. Um, however... This game can be as big or as small as you want within its space. Yep. I think it has like it has like four maps in it, and it's really like three and a half. And we only played, I think, the two mapper. It's so it was even it was a one mapper. It, was it a one mapper? They have a single one it's mapper. It's so big. Yeah, yeah. But it feels big because there's a lot of counters in it. Yeah. This uses uh, the Simonich system, so Normandy forty four, Arden forty four. Ukraine forty three. C forty yeah, three. Well, there's a trillion games out there. Yeah. This uses that system. A really good system, a system that we enjoy. I like this game a lot um, because of that. And what's nice about this is you can play. It's it's you know it's army army group south and and the Crimean forces, but you get to play all of that, and it's not massive counter density. No, it's stacking limits are two or three. It's, the stacking limits are low, and this game uses um, zone of control bonds. Yep. And that basically reduces the need for having so many counters yeah. from from an operational standpoint. Because one counter adjacent to another stack can hold that position. Yeah, in essence, it's it's very very cool how it works. A very enjoyable game. Yeah, and it's also because there's so many games in the system. Just pick one, and you can you know really get into it. Uh, but I always like a game in this system. And this was a nice way to play some East Front, mm -hmm. but because of what it is. Am I ever going to play the four mapper? It's probably never going to happen. Right. I just don't have the space for that at the right. moment. But from that, uh, I think it's the Foul Blast scenario, you, you get a really good, nice game out of it yeah. as well for just that. Uh, it's I just I really like it. It's a very, very yeah. good system. I enjoy this game immensely. And, and because I played the Russians... You know, I was defending, falling back, getting crushed, defending, falling back, getting crushed. It felt like a lot of other East Front games, but then you have those opportunities because of Zoc Bonds yeah. to make a very legitimate counterattack. And once you can make a couple of key counterattacks on the defensive, you get those disrupted counters that come out, and man, it takes two rounds to get back to fighting once you've had one of those. So... I liked biding my time, understanding where I could and couldn't counterattack. What I was trying to do as far as falling back to create a kind of an envelope of units that you had to go through. And we played this all day. I think we yep. started like at 8 in the morning. We finished up at 8 or 9 at night. So we really relished it. We went through a lot of the moves. We talked about a lot of the moves. Talked about a lot of the strategies. I had a good time with this one. It's on my list too. And yes. I, I love the... 
the four X system. You know, 44, 42, 43. I just love them. I think they're great games. Yeah, it's it's a good and it, and this is something that I'll come back to whenever we play these. If we play Holland Forty Four, it's the same. Oh, love that like, game. I play this game. It's a very famous part of World War Two, so I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, uh, which is or, or often at least a what with should be happening. Yeah, I know like what my goals are, right? Yeah, and then we play it and we spend a long time with these games. And afterwards, I'm like, eh, I just played a war game. Yeah, right. It's, and I will never like get over game. that yeah. feeling. You know, we play a lot of games, a lot of, you know, new mechanics, mm-hmm. funky different things. Like deck building, you know. Uh, but this one, it, it's just, it's not a, it's not classic in the sense that it's like the old Avalon Hill ones, which yeah. are like pulling teeth sometimes. But like, this is a Hex Encounter war game. Yeah. If you want to play a Hex Encounter war this game, is it. this is one of those. This yeah. will give you everything that you want from that style of game and and I just I don't know we play them and I'm like that was so great yeah this is a great game so well, that, that, 42. that's why I wanted to bring that up that we played it all day yeah. 13 hours and and I enjoyed it I enjoyed all 13 of those hours and frankly when it was over I was like oh really we have like, to man. go now you know mom's calling us for dinner it, you know, <laughs> but it, it's just ah oh, so good and I love playing Hex Encounter War games. We don't seem to really get enough good ones. This is a good one. Yeah, it's, it's really very, enjoyable. very enjoyable. It's so. on my list too. A little higher than you, but it's on my list. This is this is a great. Yeah, I think that it would be higher. It's it's only as low as goes East Front, I think. Yeah, and, well, people no. are screaming at you right now. I don't care. It's actually because I like the other games more. That's what yeah, it, it, that's what it boils down to. But at Stalingrad Forty Two from GMT Games. That was my number five. Five, yes. And my number five. It's a game that came out late in the year. Here it is, right here. And I know you're you're looking at this cover, going, "What is that?" I don't have that. I don't share that sentiment with you. I think it's interesting, evocative of what it is. Uh, but this is Nevsky, Teutons and Russ in Collision, twelve forty to twelve forty two, designed by one of my favorite designers, second only, frankly, to Mark Herman. I hate to say that, but Mark Herman's Mark Herman. Um, <laughs> You know, Volko, this is a new series for him. It's the Levy and Campaign series. It deals with pre-industrial warfare. So you've got your uh, siege forces, your you know, trebuchets and your catapults and your different things, knights in armor, um, archers. But this game is really built around the fighting of that time. That's why it's called Levy and Campaign. You've got to levy your forces. You've got to engage these lords and convince them, hey, come help me defeat these nasty Russians. And the Russians are saying, you know, help me defeat these Teutonic Knights. Come help me. So you're you're trying to get them to come in. Then you're trying to provide food and plunder and coin. You have to buy carts. You have to buy sleds because we all know the weather in Russia is terrible, right? They, They have a whole word for spring and winter as it ends and everything melts and thaws and rains. So that's what that part of the game is. Then there's sieges and field battles. And oh man, it's just so cool. Yes. There's such an element of planning in this game. There's a command deck. We are trying to look at the, the, the setup of the map and decide, oh, I want these three lords because you build a deck of, I think it's six cards, five or six cards. I think six. Six. And you're trying to get the most out of your guys on the board, but you're kind of guessing. You're guessing, oh, he's going to move this guy down here, so I want to make sure Domash is ready to attack. Oh, but Knud and Abel are up there, and I need to make sure to be able to attack these guys. And if your plans go awry, they can still do something, but it's so much better when the plan goes to plan. Yes. But then you got to have the right amount of food, the right amount of provender, the right amount of sleds and boats. And, man, it's just such an interesting... And I remember our first... Our first round of the f- first levy phase of the first campaign, and we were like, "What are we doing?" Uh, yeah, and, it's and, nuts. And I think I bought a bunch of this, and I put a bunch of guys in there, and then all of a sudden you realize, "Oh crap, they're going to go home now because I can't feed them." Yeah, and so I think we kind of restarted and and worked on that again, but it's just so cool. I, I don't know. I really enjoyed this game. I felt like it was immersive thematically. I've written a series of posts on it talking about the different elements of the game. So check those out. I think this is one of Volko's finest works. And I'm going to be honest, I love some of his coin games. Andy and Abyss is amazing. 
Fire in the Lake is amazing. I enjoy Falling Sky, but it's not my favorite one. But man, this this is pretty great. I would. This is to me. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I'd say it says magnum opus, but this is obviously a labor of love. Oh, there's Volga, no doubt. Right? Who's who's who else could make a game about 13th century yeah. Slavic Teutonic conflict that is so little about the actual fighting and comparatively. About the, how to get ready for the fighting. This is about like a supply yeah. and feeding your troops and paying them. Yeah. Because that's so important. Because if you mess that up... The rest of it doesn't the matter. The rest of it doesn't matter. And, and uh, so... It's very obvious that this was like a huge passion mm. product for him. So I, I, I want to play more of this. It's kind of why I didn't put it on my list, only because we've scratched the surface. Yeah, yeah. And there's so much more to explore in here. And I feel like I'm, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it it has so much to explore. Yeah. And I think it's very worth jumping into, especially if you play typically operational style games mm. where you're worrying about logistics and supply things like that. Because that's really important. But like like you said, in this game, there ain't no radios and there ain't no wire transfer paying your troops. Like you you gotta get the you yeah. you, you pick out your command cards, like, alright, these are the guys we're gonna tell them what to do. And there's no adjusting that. Yeah. Like you put them in an order and, and you're, they're gonna and go you in that reveal order. Them in that order. Yeah. You can't you can't you change, can't change it, on it the fly. Yeah. And then if you don't have enough money, well you can always get money. By raiding, the... by by going and doing a successful campaign, going yep. and fighting people, doing sieges, going killing the enemies, and getting plunder. If you don't do that and your campaign is not successful, then the lords are like, ah, yeah. sod this. Uh, we're going back I got, to, I got we're going to, to our families and farms." Yeah, and because uh, all the men are like, yeah, "What's what's the point? Yeah. We're out here dying, not getting paid. Yeah. See ya." It's and so there's that whole calendar of doing that. There's yeah. so much to this. Well, it's it's a in my opinion, it's a complete paradigm shift in, in yeah. a war game. Logistics have always been a big part of what you do. You always check for supply, you know. But this, it literally becomes, I think, one of the major actors yes. in the game. And it's so different. It's so unique. It's so interesting. And the combat's really cool. The units are really great. They have these extra capabilities from cards. You know, you got knights that are men at arms that are great bowmen, or knights that have better armor than others. And, you know, there's a lot about risking your guys to save your guys' lives, too. You know, your knights can save from hits a lot better than, say, your men at arms or your horsemen. But it's a risk. But if it's they a risk. Die, like... They're gone. <laughs> so there's times you're like, oh, I got to risk it because I'm in a bad, bad spot. So that knight might suck up a couple of hits and. I liked that. That man. was always I very really tense. That. Those yeah. die rolls were very meaningful. Very tense. And that was cool. And and the siege is really hard. I remember a couple of sieges. I'm like, oh, if I didn't know that about sieges, I wouldn't have done this. <laughs> you know, because it's really hard. But you've got to plan. you got to get ready for it. And then you got to execute it. So I think what you said, that's really important to know about this game is... Your first few games, you're gonna just—it's gonna be a cluster. You're, you're gonna make so many mistakes. This. Yeah, there's so much mm -hmm. to learn and to grok in this game that doing it yeah. requires some, some investments of yeah. time. Like get a partner together and play it and play it and yeah. play it, and it's gonna reveal itself. Yep. I think to you. Well, and and there's good news with this system. The next volume has already been announced. Al Moravid, which deals with the Christians and the. Uh, Saracens in in Spain, right? And it's it's going to be that's, really cool. That's big map. Weird. This map's pretty small. This map's like double the size, it? but it uses a lot of the same elements. So I'm really looking forward to it. I've enjoyed messing around with this game now after we've played. I've set it up a couple of times and moved things around as I'm writing about it, trying to make sure I'm remembering everything correctly. And I, I don't know. I've just really started to like this series a lot. And and, and I can't imagine I'm talking this much about a game that's on my number five on the list, but that, well, that tells you a lot. We played a lot of good games this year. So yes. that's my number five, Nevsky. Really enjoy it from GMT Games. Uh, get a copy of this and try it out. You won't regret it. Okay, so my number four game is Lost Hundred Yards, <coughs> which is a tactical game uh, from Mike Denson. That's what I said. Just published by GMT Games. There's already an expansion Excellent on the way. Game. 
this game is tip top uh, as far as uh, the rules and mechanics go. It's <clears throat> so good. Um, we play a good chunk of tactical games yeah. for a lot of different systems. This is one of my favorites. Um, I, as we were playing it, I'm like, oh, this is, it's so good because it, it ties in, your victory <laughs> conditions are tied not only to, um, losses. To, to like your losses, but also your time on mission as yeah. well. That's how you're really going to win a game. If you can do it quickly with minimal losses, you're going to win every time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the quicker you're doing it, the more kind of risky you're being, the more mm -hmm. losses you might take. So there's there's this really, really good interplay between those two things. Um, how you activate back and forth and your... Well, that to... reactive versus yeah. having the initiative. When you're reactive, you can't do everything. You've just got to got to go off the actions of your opponent then you when you win initiative you get to set the table and i liked that but, aspect. you know if you're the active one i can kind of shoot you and pin you so yep. when you do your reactive fire back to me it's not as good yep. and so uh, it, it's Th those conditions so those good. negatives negative one negative two when they get on you they affect your entire round and it's man it's punishing i remember yes. thinking how the hell am i going to get a good shot off when alexander <laughs> keeps putting negative ones and negative twos on me very interesting, but that's why initiative is important. You Very. gotta get it. You gotta get it. But yeah, there's, there's, <clears throat> the maps are geomorphic. There's a ton oh. of stuff in here. All combined arms. You got tanks. And this game has cars. mortars and armored cars and Everything's tanks. And there's so much in this game. This is also a game we've only played a couple of times. I'd like to play it a lot more. Yeah, this this but, is one of my go-to probably tactical yeah. Uh, systems, frankly. They got the airborne expansions coming up. Yep. And then are they making a whole other title as well? Did I read I, at that this point, I don't think there's okay. any announcement, but my guess is yes. At some point, I mean, maybe. Because this game really deals with the Western Front. You got Americans yep. and Germans. I mean, there's no reason they couldn't do a North Africa. There's no reason they couldn't do an East Front. Mediterranean. I mean, Italy. They could do any any number yeah, of those. It's 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 a very very good system. Yeah. Uh, tactically speaking, and this is kind of. The, the new wave of GMT games, so the counters are really well cut. Yep. Uh, and they're nice and thick on that gray core. It's just a really nice product. As the well. maps are really great. Yeah. I thought the maps were tip top. So, yeah, this is Last Hundred Yards by Mike Denser from GMT. This is my number four game of 2019. I really, really, really like this game. This one's on my list. It's a little higher. Yeah. But All right, so we're down to my number four now? Yes. All right, so my number four, I'm going to grunt as I lift this huge ammo crate over here. And this is not even the whole game that I'm talking about. This is like everything else that's Yeah, this is everything in. else. So my number four is not a new game, but it's a new game in the system. So this year came out Warfighter Pacific. Warfighter World War II Pacific. Pacific. So good. I don't care <laughs> what they call it. It's so good. So this game is, you can do it solo, you can do it cooperative. We've played it mostly cooperative, I think. Yeah. I've played a couple missions on my own. Me too. Solitaire, but it's very enjoyable for you to build a squad... You know, a lot of these Dan Versen games, you end up building a squad. You have a certain amount of points. The soldiers cost you a certain amount. The equipment costs you a certain amount. They have skills in this system. You know, you're a better shot or you can shoot farther or you have more grenades. I mean, there's all kinds of... So you build this squad of World War II, basically Marines. It's not just Marines. It is mostly. It mostly one, Marines. Yeah. You know, you build this squad and then you go through a mission which has somewhere between three and seven terrain cards. And you have a starting card and an objective card at the very end. And there might be five or six spaces in between. And you've got to play your terrain, then move into that terrain. You get a certain amount of actions. Every round, the AI is going to spawn enemies. And you're going to have to fight your way out. You're going to have to move through difficult terrain, deal with challenges mosquitoes, lack of water. Um, I mean, there's any other difficult Just to enter ground, stuff, like yeah. ravines. Jungle fever. Jungle fever. And, <laughs> and your whole goal is to move along this track to get to your final objective, do what it says. It might say kill all enemies on the board. It might say have three soldiers in this space. And, and that's what your objective is. You have a certain amount of time to do it. You have spawning enemies that get harder and harder and more and more they follow you they don't just go away yeah you run into them they follow you 
It's a lot about dice rolling. The the dice are very unkind. You have to roll mostly seven or higher very, on a ten very sider. Cool dice, yeah. But I have not had as much fun with a game as I've had with Warfighter Pacific in a long, long time. Yeah, and that's this game is a, just a game, a fun game, right? It, it's just a blast. It's, we play it for fun. It's really, really good. Like, there's a couple games that we play that are like for fun, and it's like this. And then like alien deck the building. alien deck building. Yeah. We right. play it for fun. It's not a war game, but we play it for then, fun. Like then it's not you know you can get invested in it, but like it's yeah. not the most serious, crunchy game right. of all time. Like it's pretty pulpy at times. Like you're a couple guys running and gunning. Yeah. However, you do need to employ some some good tactics. Some tactics, yeah. And if you if you can do that and do that well, you can be quite successful at this game. Mm -hmm. Like I'll never forget. Like we would just get slaughtered our first few missions. Well, and some of the missions, I I'm going to be honest. Some they're different. pretty darn hard. But then, like, there's one in World World War II that we still haven't beaten, uh, and just, I think we played that one four or five times. Just nuts. But so, some, but some of them, it's like we kind of figured out. All right, let's like try and build a good squad. Yeah. So I remember we had a couple good guys. Then we had like good equipment, a, a machine gun team yep. to lay down suppressing fire. Yep. So then we could do other things. And and when you really like get into it. Then it becomes, mm -hmm. yeah, you get some really neat, it gives you back, it rewards you for, for yeah. putting stuff into this one. Yeah. Very fun game. So so I really enjoy it. I've had a great time with this. We've even played this game with our father-in-law. So we've done it where we've had three of us playing. Yes. It can get a little cumbersome when you have three. It's yeah. really made for solo and then two-player the co-op. Two, probably, yeah. But it, it's just fun. It's unadulterated fun. I have a good time with this. I feel good about playing it. You, you know, you get a little historiosity, you get a little tactical choices and some difficulties. And, you know, sometimes it comes down to, you know what, I just didn't draw a good terrain. Yeah. And that's okay. So, sometimes like, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, we're screwed. We got killed. Let's go back and start over. Yeah. And the games play somewhere between 30 to 60 minutes, I think, the scenarios. Yeah. Um, there's a couple that I think have gone. Uh, you gone can longer. you can lose very quickly in yeah. this one too. You can, you can do a ten minute game if you want. But we <laughs> since since playing uh, Pacific, we've now got World War Two. Yep. Uh, there's like the European theater. Yeah, and then Shadow War. Yes, that's so that's modern. Modern. Uh, it's just there's so many iterations of this game. There's a lot of expansions. So just a good fun. You know, I hate the word Baron Pretzels. You know, war game, but but, but that's it, what it yeah. is. It's just a good time. This is my number four. This is actually my number three game. Yeah. Uh, it's World War II Warfighter Pacific. Uh, this is... I, 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 like, and this is the ammo chest that yeah. has, like, all the stuff in I've it. I've got ridiculous. all my boards in it from Europe and not. And then in here, I have, like, all my cards. Like, there's a the ton of stuff in here. But it's just fun. I just enjoy it. Well, and I get that collecting bug from this one. Uh, Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's okay. like, that's I, I want these seven expansions. This and... is a money drain. Yeah. If you're a collector, just be warned. Yeah. That's all. You're not going to get just the base and be okay with it. You're going to need... You can. You, you can, can do that. But you're but you not going to be okay with it. Yeah. You're going to you're gonna want those, oh, I want the hostile Americans so that I can play Japanese versus Americans. And, yeah. and then I want, ooh, I want the beach, the amphibious landing That's one of the one. best expansions, and, by the way. Ooh, I want the metal expansion because it gives you extra ability. And, or just, uh, or just so more. Fun. Like yeah. there's just more yeah. expansions. It creates a collecting bug. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Tanks expansion. Yeah, uh, anti tanks yep. expansion. It's, it's I ridiculous. Mean, airborne and an airborne for every country. You can have like yeah. false Jäger. You can have American paratroopers. I think there's British. I think there's Polish. Polish. I mean, it's it's insane. There's, but it's great. Yeah, it's. I have never played this and not enjoyed myself. Yeah, never. And that's really even what it is. when we got our butt kicked. Yeah, and Pacific was the first one we played. It came out in 2019. It's a standalone game. Yeah. Even though you could, in, te in theory, like merge it with any of the other ones, you can do all that. That's that's kind of nice. You can yeah. kind of pick and mix what you want with this system. But it's fine. The, the, the Pacific was really cool because you're just you know you're, it's U.S. Marines or U.S. Army, but you're going through the Kunai grass and yeah, you're getting in a little and it's the palm groves. And a, the... You know, it's ah, yeah. oh, it's just fun. It's a really yeah. good game. If you like solo games like that. This is a really, really good get for you. And I know they haven't announced it yet, but they are working on a fantasy version of this. Yes. And yeah. what I mean by fantasy is like Dungeons and Dragons, 
you know, knights and dragons and wizards. Yeah. It's on the rule book. So this is a universal rule book, and they have like the medieval fantasy stuff. Then there's World War Two. Then there's modern. The modern. Then there's also a sci-fi stuff as yeah, well, which is I mean, in the works at some point. Who knows when? So that's why I mean by addictive and collecting. You're you're not going to get just one edition of this. You're going to want to buy every one of them. But so the World War Two stuff is where it's at for me. Oh, it's so the Pacific good. Sweet was, spot. It came out this year and introduced us to system. So good. So that's yeah. my number three is Warfighter yeah. Pacific. So my number four, your number three. <laughs> Excellent so system. Heavy. Yeah, don't get a hernia. <laughs> All right, my number three, and we've already talked this one to death, but Undaunted Normandy from David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. I love this game. I've had a great time with this game. It doesn't necessarily have a solo mode, but I think there's different recommendations on Board Game Geek for how to play it solo. Yeah. I'd like to see David create a solo system, and I'm not sure that he's not working on that. I thought he said he... I thought he... He I said, thought he he said he was let, he would let, let others someone do else. It, okay, that's not his forte. Well, I would I would love to have a solo system to this where it's I know I can create my own, but anyway, I really enjoyed this from the art to the production. Osprey always does a great job. Yeah, looks good on the table. I love the tiles, and they are not just tiles; they're offset tiles. So they create some very interesting decision points on which tile you move from and to. I love that. I love the objective-based, you know, capture these three points or take this river. There's 12 missions, I think. You can play through them. We've played this four, five, six times, and I've not not enjoyed one of them. No, it's it's really neat because it teaches you um, <clears throat> some of the, like, just the basics of, like, tactical combat yeah. and things like that. You have to cover. You have to scout. Yeah. Right? Uh, if you go running around, you've got a bunch of fog of war cards mm-hmm. given to you. Which gum up your deck. Yeah, which makes it harder to command. Yep. You're like, yeah, that makes sense. And some some of that is abstracted and chromed into this game in a really clever way. Yeah. That keeps it a, a really good playable game as yep. well. So it, there's some neat things to learn in there if this is your first war yeah. game or tactical game as well. I think would be a great entry into kind of conflicts, conflict games and lead to war games. But I love it. Uh, beautiful production. Fantastic game. Thank you, David. So my number two game... Of 2019 is uh, another huge box. I get honey from this one. It is Red Alert Space Fleet Warfare, which is Command in Colors yes. sci-fi. This is Commands in Colors spaceships. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's designed by Richard Bork, put out by PSC Games. All the Commands in Colors games are good. I've not played one I didn't particularly like. I've loved it's, every single one of them. It's a really good system. <clears throat> this is a, a massive bumper product. Yeah. But it's well, the spaceships. It's are, yeah. show, you got to show them the spaceships. Right, well, it's, if if you've not seen our video review of this and see us slobbering all over these spaceships, it doesn't have a map. It has like a plain, plain map, map with all the hexes on it. So that's yeah, it's kind of so nuts. cool. But I have bags upon bags of oh, oh they're all falling out of like genuine bona fide one hundred percent plastic spaceships. I mean, look look at the detail and there's. Look at the detail on that, guys. Literally dozens and dozens and dozens of them. So. And they're huge or small. I mean, <clears throat> there's so much in here, but it's but it still retains that <clears throat> commands and colors system, yeah. which is just a great combat system. Uses the cards to move units on the left, the right, the center, take special actions. But this gives you also that toy factor, yeah. which... I'll be honest, I'm a sucker for yeah. We're moving the ships around. I'm making laser noises. <laughs> we're pew pewing each other. Yeah. And but this also has an, a nice level of depth to it. Where did I put that card? Oh, they're over here. You you get um <clears throat> things like the bigger capital ships yeah. can basically bounce hits from smaller class ships. Yeah. So there is n- some nice tactics into how you construct your fleet, mm-hmm. how you fly them, keeping your big ships protected by smaller ships, or using your big ships to just waste smaller things because they can't bounce those hits. Well, and there will come a time where you may have to use those big ships to, because everything else is dead. So <sighs> and it's it's just mm-hmm. it's very very fun. It, this is and that's that's why this is so yeah. high on my list. It's a fun game. It, it's it, just a blast. Yeah. You just line them up and shoot them. Yeah. Lasers and spaceships. I'm a sucker for sci-fi. 
This yep. is great. This is an excellent game. Well, and, and like all of the Command and Colors game, it's just about fun. Yep. You know, you, you know you're going to get bad cards from time to time. You know your dice rolls are going to be bad from time to time. But isn't that all war games? Yeah. I mean, for the life of me, I can't roll a two sometimes on a six-sided two <laughs> or higher, and I happen to roll a one. But it's just fun. It's, it's just great. It's a good time. There is a lot of strategy and tactics to it. I think the more you play it, the more you understand that, and you become better and better about how to use the different ships. You know, we've probably played Napoleonics the most, I think, right? Uh, probably, yeah. And the more we've played that, the better I've become with the different types of units. So that's the way this is going to be as well. You're going to play it and get more and more familiar with how yeah, it plays. Yeah, it's not, it's not a historical mm -hmm. game. No. But not that we know of. No. I sincerely hope it isn't. But no. it's a really, really fun <clears throat> game. Yeah. That's uh, that's yep. all I can say about it. I it's just great. have such a good time playing this. Yeah. From so, PSC games. PSC, Red Alert. I have like long expansions for it too yeah. because I'm a collecting insane person. Well, and you even got the Gen Con exclusive ship pack yep, I went, last year. I, I signed up for the event. Just to get the ships. Richard Borg, yeah, shook his awesome. hand. And they were given out, you know, he had a like, promo ship, something like that. So it's just a fun yeah. war game. And that's what, you know, this is about for me. That was your number that two? That was my number two. All right, my number two is Stalingrad 42. We've already talked this one to death, but I really had two very good Hex Encounter war games on my list this year. Actually, three or four. And then this is just, it's one of the best. I mean, this game is so good. I don't care if you're playing the Russians and getting destroyed, it's fun. It's a good time. Playing the, the Germans, I think, allows for a lot more flexibility. And a uh, in the early more, game. In the least, early game, yeah. a little more attacking. The other thing we didn't talk about in your part of was I loved the security forces that had to kind of watch your back as you advanced. Oh, uh, old NKBD forces. Yeah. And it was just, no, 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 I'm talking about your security forces for the Germans. See, remember, I could spawn my re reinforcements anywhere along that edge of the map. And as oh. the front started pushing up, I I, I was going to spawn in there, and I'm like, ooh, that was so cool. But you had those security forces to stop that. I just thought that was really cool. It reminded me a little bit of Holland 44, because the reinforcements kind of came the same way. Just kind of came from everywhere. Yeah, from yeah. everywhere. But just so many. I love the Zachman system. I love the counterattacks for the Germans. I had a good time with this one. Yeah, so that's it's... why it's my number two. And GMT Games has done a great job on this. Seminich is amazing. I'll play any game in the <clears throat> series that yeah. they make. He's working, I know, his next one, I think, is Italy 43. Which so, I could not be more excited yeah, to play. It's going to be awesome. So anyway, Solingrad 42, my number number two. So, my number one game of 2019, <clears throat> probably not a surprise to anyone. A surprise to me. Uh, is <clears throat> Fields of Fire Volume 2. And he doesn't even have the box. Nope. Because the stuff don't fit in the box. So make a bigger box, please. Make a bigger box. Comes, a six-inch box. It comes in a two-inch box, which is just just throw it away yeah. now. It's, there's no point. Well, uh, once you clip the counters and get all the cards out, there's no way. E e yeah, there's, there's no, no way. way. Even if you... No, there's yeah. no way. So I've got it in this three-inch kind of fake gift shoe box. Uh, but yeah, this is my rule book. And I met Ben Hull uh, last year. And, and signed I it. signed it because I'm a loser. But this is a solitaire only game. The Fields of Fire system is so good. Uh, I understand that it has its problems in the sense that the rule book is not good. Uh, and sometimes the counter isn't there that you need. No. So, and that was the problem <laughs> with this. So, <clears throat> the counter isn't supposed to be there. Oh, it's not. Did you, yeah. I did not know that. So, we my, had to talk about when this. When I first got this game, <laughs> It has all this new stuff, and I was super excited. And you know, because it's it's this is um, it covers Fifth Marine Division, and so it's you know you do all these beach landings and things mm -hmm. like that in the in the World War Two campaign. So you like and and you there's a there's a naval forward artillery observer, and so he calls in the big battleship mm -hmm. naval strikes. At least that's what it says in the rules. <laughs> it was taken out of the game. It's not supposed to be oh. there. The rule was not removed from the book. Oh. So I was looking for a counter which wasn't supposed that to be there. That didn't exist. And so okay. I was like, what? And, and, 
I, you never told me this story. <laughs> yeah. And so when they, well, and when that they, part of the story, when they released the C three I this year, I was expecting the being. Yeah, there. I remember and we talked about that, and I was like, "What Why the heck?" It? Yeah, they put all these Iran's counters for, yeah. the, for the machine gun counters. They didn't put a they didn't put a naval observer in there. And, it's, and then I read online all the Iran's, and they were like, "Oh, it's not supposed to be there." I was like, "Yeah." So <laughs> there are some rules which are like super hard to read in the rule book, and there are some rules which shouldn't even be in the rule book. So it's got it, it's, and, and I wish that they'd updated the rule book because it's exactly the same rule book from the second printing of Volume One. It's effectively exactly the same rule book with the new stuff added at the end. Got it. So that you know, I wish they'd improved that, but I know the system already. Yeah. So it was just adding some new bits and pieces to it. And and you love the system. I it's, I know you've raved it, it, about it. It could not be a better solo game. Yeah. So yes, the game gives you a great story and narrative, but gives you a lot of control over it. Mm. And usually solitaire games have to make a choice between those two things. You either get a really nice narrative game where there's not so many decisions made, or you get a lot of decisions really crunchy, uh, and so you kind of it's very rules intensive. Mm -hmm. The story is less important as more as it is just like a moving pieces on a board trying to claim an objective. This to me um, is slapped down in the middle. Rules are pretty intense, but yeah. you get a fantastic <clears throat> story but you also have a really cool command structure and you get to move everyone around and do everything. Uh, volume 2, like I said, it's 5th Marines. So you've got um, World War II, uh, Pacific Campaign, you have the Korean Korea. Campaign, and you've got Battle of Wei in Vietnam as well. So this has urban combat, which is very, very different, something very mm. new as well. Have you played a lot of the urban uh, combat? I, I've played with that once, uh, and I want to do more of it, but it, it, it's a totally different tactical situation mm. about how and where you move in and around cards. and mm. It is quite literally moving from building to building, kicking down each door, okay. clearing it out, clearing out everyone from the second wow. floor. I mean, it is so interesting. It's so different from... Uh, the the other campaigns in mm. this system, so there is a lot to like in this. I, I just it's more of my favorite stuff, so mm -hmm. it's not a surprise in any way that this is my number one favorite yeah. game. Once I finally got it played, I'm just like, yeah, this is it's, yeah, it's just, just there. This is my most fun favorite war game of 2019, and I've never played it. I have only lived through your stories, <sighs> so yeah. Definitely, so I've seen you love it. That's this is for my sure. Number four. Do you sleep with that rule book under your pillow sometimes? Uh, I feel like there is. It's big enough where it could act yeah, as a pillow it would for sure. Be a little comfortable. Nothing wrong with that. It might help you get the rules a little easier. I just slept on through, it. Right? Well, if I through osmosis, if I just put it on my head, I might <laughs> get more yeah. of the rules. Uh, it's it's excellent. <clears throat> I just I just can't play this enough, yeah. frankly. Yeah. So this is my number one. Fields of Fire Volume Two with the old breed from GMT Games. Breed. Nice. Your number one game. What is my it? number one? Well, I think I already mentioned that it was higher on my list a couple minutes ago. But last, the last hundred yards, we play a lot of tactical games. We already mentioned this. This has taken tactical games to another level for me. It's added in a lot of elements like the time, not only your casualties, but the time element to your victory conditions, the reactive versus initiative fire. You know, the when you're when you have the initiative and when you're only reacting. I love those conditions that follow you around, and then just the variety. You know, we love Combat Commander. I, I've, I will We've say played Combat. That a lot. I've played it a lot. I will say Combat Commander is my favorite tactical system. This one is probably now one A for me. I really yeah. enjoyed it that much. I had that good of a time with it. Enjoyed every element of it. I think the narrative is fantastic. I just think. It's a really nice package that works really well. When I did the interview with Mike Denson like three years ago, he made the comment to me. He didn't. He didn't say he didn't like Combat Commander. He didn't care for the card play. And and that's that is uh, not an uncommon yeah. Which, criticism of it. Who we on those people? The cards are the best part. <laughs> but he had mentioned that he felt his game was more superior in modeling combat. And I'm going to be honest, I think the narrative is better with Combat Commander, but this does model tactical level World War II combat very, very well. I think it's very interesting because it takes in all those aspects. Yeah. Not just your firepower, not just your command rating, it takes everything into effect. And I just think this is a really cool, deep system. 
I'm looking forward to Airborne because who doesn't like Airborne? Yep. Um, I look forward to playing this more and getting more intimate and familiar with it. I just think it's a great system. So this is my number one war game of 2019. The last hundred yards from GMT Games. So that was it. That's that's our kind of top tens of 2019. I know it's like super late in 2020 already, but yeah. that's it. It took us a long time to get this. Could we do those uh, two or three games that we maybe wanted to play and or thought were really good? Just a couple. I want a couple to kind a couple. of honorable mentions. Yeah. yeah, go for it. Well, uh, so Tango Down. Remember that game from Tiny oh. Battle Publishing? <laughs> that game is really neat. Once again, tactical level. I kind of that is man level. Well, it's man, man to man. Yeah, you're right. Person. But it's it's man to man combat tactical level on a on a kind of geomorphic map. I think you flip it over and it has a couple. So yeah, it's different it's, rooms. It's got and, two. It's got two maps. Yeah, and I think that's one. It would have made the list if it had come with maybe one more double sided sheet. It was. You're right. There and, wasn't a lot of variety to it. And it's tiny battle publishing, and so the counters are a little. Funky, They're waxy but, and but man, it's fun. That's a really fun little, I, little game. It's Counter Strike Go, the board game. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, it, it's I, really cool. I loved it. I had a great time with that, that was game. A very fun game. The, the coolest thing I did was I remember peeping my head around a corner, throwing a grenade at you, hitting you, and blowing you up to like kill the last guy. And I thought that's just amazing. Yeah, just such a good game. But that was kind of an honorable mention to me because I really had a good time playing that one. Really had a good time. Yeah, that was a great time. But, you know, Interceptor Ace, I don't love solo gaming, but I do enjoy a good narrative. And, man, that was fun. Just so dangerous because you're fighting in the daytime. And and your fighter is so perfectly it's, armored. It's just, you get hit once or twice, you're dead. You can't, I mean, let's be honest. You just get strafed and you're like, <laughs> look at the Man, land. it's so fun. And I love, love Greg's designs. Just have a really good time with them. Um I know you had a couple. Yeah, so I, like so, and I kind of mentioned that games that didn't make my list, things like Gandhi, Bleeding Kansas, because they're not necessarily war games for me. Those right. were excellent. I mean, those are like games of the year candidates yeah. for me. War to get was really really good. Um, yeah, really good. I've I've got Red Storm back here. You've read through the rules. Uh, I just but, haven't. I just didn't yeah. get. To, haven't played it yet. I imagine that I will like it very much. It seems right up my alley. Yeah. The kind of thing that I would like. So I'm expecting to like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's... Oh. Freeman's Farm was another one I really enjoyed. Freeman's Farm was... From Worthington Games. That one was Just right. a fun, fairly light, interesting game that dealt with kind of spatial elements of, of fighting and where your troops can... I just really enjoyed it. Plus the cards were great and the little economy. I enjoyed... Um... Worthington put out a game called Robin Hood. I think that was this Yeah, game. I didn't get to play that one. No, I played that with John, who's a father of nut. And it was just an, it's a little block war game. It's yeah. neat. That was a fun game, so I had a good time with that one. Fortress too. Europa Designer Signature Edition was another great one. Yeah. I, from and Compass. I, that's not really a 2019 game to me, though. Well, it came out in 19, but it was a it's a designer signature edition so yeah. it's like 1978 but and i really enjoyed that game yeah well, fun game fun game yeah so and that's a real hex encounter war game yeah that one's and that i mean that one's that one is a very classic game. yeah yeah uh, it's it's got a little it's the system's been around for who knows how long yeah we also played uh commands and colors medieval from gmt and it just did not do it for us well, that was one that just fell flat for us. And I think it was thematic. Yes. It was the theme and that, what we were expecting. We really liked some of the elements, but I didn't like it enough to put it on my list. But yeah, it's it's an enjoyable game, sure, because it's Commands and Colors. Yeah, it's, it's a good system. But like, when you say Commands and Colors medieval, medieval to me... I think of knights. I do not think of Byzantines yeah. and Assyrians. Bow archer, like, archer that's horseman. Not, that's just not what I was expecting out of it. So I was a little bit yeah. deflated, and as such, it, it's just it's a topic. Frankly, commands and colors, pick a theme. Yeah. That's the one you'll like. Yeah, that one's the least interesting topic to me of all of them. Frankly, yeah, that's all. That's really all it but is. But I me. think it had some neat elements to the system. Another one we played: Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea. I know our group had mixed reactions to it. <sighs> yeah, but I think for what it was, a light take that card-based, civilization light building game, I thought it was interesting. I had an interesting time with it. Yeah. I don't know that I'm going to play it over and over and over and over again, but I thought it was interesting. I don't know that it belonged on this list, 
but it was a valiant effort from Mark. Yeah, I think that's a game where if I was at a con and there was yeah. five people sat down, that I'd play it. And they said, "Hey, I need a six to play this." I'd be like, "Sure." Yeah. But if I was on a, at my own set, I would want to play it, um, Mare Nostrum instead. I would definitely rather play Mare Nostrum. And it's just that's a yeah, a but that's a different game, game, and it's just one of our favorites. No, but it's it's that kind of half setting, and yeah. I would rather play that. So those were kind of some of the ones that I remembered from our... Now, we played a lot, a lot of other ones. I mean, an ungodly amount. And there's still a but, ton that we did Yeah. Like, I've got, like, Red Storm. I've got World at War 85 that I'm desperate to play as Death well. Death Valley. Death Valley, from, uh, yeah. GMT we didn't get to play. We didn't get to play the uh, Devil Dogs of Bella Wood from Worthington. No, That's they, one that I'm very interested in. You know, they reprinted SPQR. Yep. Uh, there's just a ton of stuff. We're failures. That we just... We only played 40 games. Only, What's wrong with only us? Only so much that you can get to. Yeah. However, 2020 is shaping up to have some decent games in it as well. Absolutely. So we're going to get cracking on some of those as well. Yeah. But uh, that was it. That was our top 10 war games. Our top 10. And this is our list. My top 10 favorite games. Yeah. In no way objectively the best yeah. games. Don't, the ones that I enjoyed the most. Yeah. Don't so. take it to the bank that these are the best games in creation. Please, please, please. <laughs> Put your recommendations yeah. and your lists in the comments. I want to know, you know, what you played. Yeah. Uh, what from, you 2019, liked. <laughs> yeah. from 2019, though. From 2019. From every other year. <laughs> no. Just 2019. But yeah, I, it, let us know what you played, what you liked, what we need to check out, and we'll see if we can't get to those as well. Yeah. So appreciate you guys very much tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.